What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com continuing our series on modeling a house for layout inside of SketchUp. So if you remember in the first video we came in and we started creating some different windows and uh, we kind of set up our exterior walls in order to get started. In this video I wanted to continue this by creating my uh, main stair as well as starting to add the interior walls inside of my model. If you're looking for more in-depth training on creating architectural plans from a SketchUp model, as well as how to set your SketchUp model up um, to be successful inside of layout, make sure you check out my SketchUp Essentials for Architecture course. You can get more information about that at the link in the notes down below. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna figure out our stair location. And so our stair location is kind of gonna drive the way the rest of this building looks. And by the way, this may look a little bit different than uh, it did before. I went in and kind of moved some windows around and made some changes um, in order to kind of adjust this so that we'll have at least a passable floor plan. But the first thing I wanna do, especially with this building, is I wanna add my stair, um, just so that I can kind of lay out the way that everything's going to sit in here. And so the first thing for me is it seems pretty logical that with this particular building, the stairwell is gonna be right here. So I think that makes the most sense where it's gonna be kind of a stairwell that kind of wraps around in here. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna figure out how to create that stair. And so the way that we're gonna figure out how to create that stair is I'm gonna start by drawing a couple guides um, that are going to show up um, down below here. So the way that I'm gonna do that is I'm going to use the tape measure tool in create guide mode. I'm just gonna create a guide that runs all the way down below. So now I can see straight down where that stairwell would be. I can even add a line right here just so that I can see that. And so what I wanna do is I wanna take a look at this and figure out basically the height between the different floors. And so to do that, I can toggle back to my overall working view. And just for a second, I'm going to turn off um, my walls on the first level. So these are gonna be my exterior walls. So I'm just gonna hide these right now. Um, it would probably be more helpful if I had them on a layer, but that's okay. Um, so basically what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna measure the distance between this level and the first floor of this level. And you can see how our stair is going to make up or need to be about 10 feet high. And so from there, I'm just gonna kind of back into the way that a stair would look. So the way that I'm gonna do that is I'm assuming my landing is going to be about halfway. So I'm just gonna draw a line up to be about five feet high. And we'll just rough out our landing real quick. And we'll figure our landing maybe, we'll call it three feet wide for right now. We may end up changing this. But now I kind of know how tall my stair is going to be and I need this to come down five feet and I need it to go up five feet. And so what I'll do is I'll kind of split the difference on this in a second. But first I'm gonna kind of rough this out. And so I think the maximum height for something like this would be seven and three quarters of an inch. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna figure out, because we have kind of a compressed space, I'm gonna go ahead and go with the maximum step for each one of these. But I'm assuming that this is going to be 7.75 inches. And then we'll go ahead and we'll assume an 11 inch run for right now. So I'm just gonna type in 11 inches. And so then I'm just gonna take these lines. I'm just gonna use the move tool in copy mode to copy this profile down. Then I'll type in times, maybe like six or something like that and hit the enter key. And then I may need to draw this down one more time, but you can see how that allowed me to kind of rough out the profile of my steps. Then I can use the push pull tool to extrude this across. And uh, notice that I just want to extrude this across to this midpoint. Notice one other thing is this is removing material from this face right here. So if you tap the control key to go into create new face mode, then you won't have to worry about that anymore. But basically what I have is I have my stair profile here. Now I need to do the same thing over here. So I can assume this is gonna go up 11.75. And we could probably get a little bit more by making this riser step up, but let's see what this is going to look like. So we'll do 11 inches here. I use the move tool in copy mode. We'll do times, I'll just type in seven. And then we should be able to go into our level two working view in order to see this. And it looks like even that it looks like because I modeled my stair inside of this group that it's not showing up on my second level 
working view. So what I'll do is I'll just go into my overall working view and this is why setting things up like your roof with different tags can be important. So if I add a tag for roof, and then I take my second floor roof and put it on the roof layer, now I can turn that off and I can kind of see what I'm working with. And so we can see that basically my stairwell is gonna intersect with my floor right here. So we can go ahead, we can draw a line out to this point, like this. We can delete out our material. And we can turn off our ceiling. So we can see that this is going to be the opening size that we have in here. And then I'll just draw a line to split this. And I can just erase out my extra, just like this. Then I can go back into my level one working view and I can finish roughing out this shape. And so for right now, we'll just assume this has the same depth right here. So it has a depth of 11 inches. And then we can just push pull this down so that it's level right here. We can draw a line across this face. And we'll just push pull this across in order to create our stair. So now I have my stair roughed out, but one thing I wanna do is I wanna come in here and I wanna put it in its own group. So I'm just gonna triple click on it to select all the associated geometry and I'm just gonna click make group. And I'm gonna go ahead and rename this stair. And then we'll create a layer and we'll call it ARCH underscore stair. We'll go ahead and we'll drop this on your ARCH stair group. So now we have our stair kind of roughed out in here. I can start creating walls around it. So if you look at this, you've got your opening on level two. Right here, your stair runs up into it. And this is one thing that gets a little bit tricky. Sometimes I kind of think about taking this stair and putting it outside of my uh, level one group. So it's in its own group. That way you can turn it on um, on level one or level two. So I may drag this into my overall outer shell group that makes up my building. That way the conceptual levels that we have turned on here don't affect that. But that way my stair is on Either way, if I go to my level one working view or my level two working view, my stair is on. And then once you're done with this, you can erase out these guides. You don't really need them anymore. And we can start creating some interior walls. And so for this model, um, I'm just going to model out the walls a little bit at a time. One thing you may want to think about doing, and we can talk about this more in a second, is putting your exterior walls and your interior walls on different groups. Um, and I'm just going to do a little cleanup here. We'll call this ARCH underscore roof, just so we're uh, kind of consistent. Now let's model our walls. So the way that we're gonna do that is we're going to start by just roughing out our wall. And make sure you're in your level one group when you do this, because we wanna model our level one walls in our level one group, and our level two walls in our level two group. So the way that we're gonna do that is just double click in here to make sure you're in your level one group. And then we're just gonna start roughing out walls. So. I'm just gonna draw a line right here. I'm assuming my interior walls are gonna be three and five eighths of an inch thick. And I'm just going to rough out a shape like this one. And so we can go ahead and we can rough out all of our walls at once if we want to, or you could also push pull each one of them up. Um, for right now, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to just model them all out flat and then we can push, them, push pull them all up at once. And so I'm just gonna model another wall in here, and I'm assuming this one is probably gonna run to about this point, and probably to this wall. So we can take all of this, model this in, and then we can offset it out by three and five eighths of an inch just by selecting these and then tapping the F key. This one we may have to do a little bit of work to make it all align properly, but that's okay as well. Then we'll just model another wall over here that's maybe six inches off. And we're gonna assume that this is gonna run down to about this corner. And I'm just gonna offset this in by three and five eighths of an inch as well. And then I'll draw a line across in order to fill this in. And my assumption for this building 
is that we're going to have, and we may move this back just a bit. We may move this back off of this uh, opening a little bit. Now we'll leave it flush for right now. My assumption is that we're gonna have a bathroom right here and then a closet right here. I'm gonna assume the interior of this closet is 36 inches deep. And then I'm just gonna draw a line across here. I'll draw one more line, three and five eighths of an inch across here as well. And if you get extra faces in here, you can just delete them out. But so these are gonna make up my interior walls on my first level. I don't have a whole bunch of them um, just because this is going to be a fairly open floor plan. But one thing we need to do when we do this is we need to rough out our door openings. So this wall right here, I assume isn't going to have a door opening. So we can go ahead and extrude that up to the ceiling. Um, this one is going to get a little bit tricky, so probably what we're going to do is we're going to extrude this up to the bottom of the stair like this, and then I'll probably split it off just by drawing a line right here. Then I'll extrude this all the way up to my structure like this, and probably I will actually draw a line across here and extrude this wall out to about this point, or maybe to this point so that we're level. And then over here, though, if I do that, you can see how I don't have any door openings. And you could come in here if you wanted to and cut those door openings after the fact. I find it a lot easier, though, to go ahead and lay out my door openings right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm assuming at this point, for example, I'm going to have a three-foot door. So, and probably this three-foot door is just going to come off of this wall just a little bit. So I'm going to say it's going to come six inches off of this wall, but I'm just going to draw a line across here that's going to be three feet long and I'm going to split this and I'm going to erase out these edges. So when I erase out these edges, now I have a door opening kind of built in. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm assuming this is going to have some kind of like a bifold door or something like that. Um, so I'm going to say that this is going to be three feet one way. I'll draw a line across here. It's going to be three feet the other way. And then we'll just erase out all of this extra. And so now I have my interior walls ready to go and I can push pull those up to the structure. And so there's a few different ways you can do this because obviously your openings aren't gonna go all the way to structure like this. Usually what I do is I just draw a rectangle across the top and then I draw a line up this edge that's seven feet high so that I have a point that I can inference to and then I just push pull this down until I'm level with this point like this and then I just erase out this extra note that if this comes in here hollow you can just tap the control key in order to create or uh, enter enter new face mode um, in order to avoid that but I would do the same thing over here so just rectangle seven foot line and we'll push pull this down. So the last thing I want to talk about for this video is keeping everything organized as we do this. So, and you can see I'm erasing out this extra geometry as I go, but what we want to do is we want to put all of this in one group and then we want to make sure it goes on our walls layer. So the way that we're going to do that is I'm just going to triple click on each one of these. So I'm just doing a shift triple click in order to select them. I'm just gonna come in here, I'm gonna make them a group and I'm gonna label this interior walls. And I'm gonna drag that into my overall walls group. I'm also gonna go into my overall walls group and select everything that isn't in that group. I'm gonna right click on it and I'm gonna make that a group. I'm gonna call this exterior walls. I like to put those on a different, uh, in a different group so that if I need to do like a different line weight or something like that, they're in there separately. Well, then we can come in here and we can add a tag and we'll call it rch underscore walls underscore int. And we'll put our interior walls on that layer. We'll create another layer that's going to be the same, but with ext for our exterior walls. And so the reason for that is now I can turn my interior walls and my exterior walls off separately, which can be very helpful for adding line weights and other things like that um, in the future.
So I'm going to go through and I'm going to do the same thing on the second level. Um, I don't think I'm going to film that just because it's going to be the same process that we followed right here. Just remember, rough these out on the ground, add your openings, and then extrude them up. That can be a lot easier when you're working with your layouts. So that's where I'm going to end this video. Like I said, um, if you're looking for more in-depth training on modeling for layout, make sure to check out my SketchUp Essentials for Architecture course at the link in the notes down below. Uh, leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about this series, if you found this helpful. I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.